I think about uh, rematch, uh, we should ask uh, boxing fans, do they want this rematch? Yes. If they want, I, yes. I would like to give uh, this rematch and I would like to get this chance, of course, again. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> His Excellency said, wrong decision, we do a rematch. So that's what we know he's a man of his word. We know he's supported Dimitri Bivo. We thank him so much, not just for the opportunities for Dimitri Bivo, but what he's given boxing tonight by making that fight. And there has to be a rematch because Arta better be a, they, you know, he, there's always going to be the controversy of that fight. And he's a true champion. What other fight is there for Arta better be I mean, you know, the whole world will want to see that again. The whole world will know, you know, I'm sure there's some that found a, a better be a victory, but everybody I know that knows boxing didn't tell me that at ringside. What's up, fight fans? Welcome back to the channel. We're back with some breaking news that's going to knock your socks right off your feet. Dimitri Bivol officially called for a high-stakes rematch against none other than the undisputed light heavyweight champ, Artur Beterbiev. Yeah, you heard that right. Bivol wants all the smoke after that controversial fight that still got the boxing world buzzing. If you thought the first bout between these two Russian beasts was fire, brace yourself because it's about to get even crazier. Let's break down everything leading up to this point, why Bivol's out for revenge, and what a rematch would mean for both these fighters. All right, let's rewind to that insane fight in Saudi Arabia, where Artur Beterbiev was crowned the undisputed light heavyweight champ after a majority decision win over Bivol. Now, y'all know, the internet went wild after those scorecards dropped. Like 116, 112, 115, 113, even with one one judge calling it 114, 114. Everyone was like, wait, what fight were the judges watching? Eddie, uh, I was surprised by the decision, but it's just a joke. A joke. Say that again. It's a joke. Yeah. They knew. Mm. They told him in the 10th round, you have to knock him out to win this fight. Who told him? The corner? Yeah. It's yeah. on TV. Yeah. It's, they're all standing in the corner. The fight's over. We're in the Bivol's corner. I'm looking yeah. around. They are like this. Mm. How could you score that fight 8 4 to ask a better bit? Mm. Unbelievable. Terrible decision. Terrible decision. What what can be done? What are you guys gonna do to listen? Hopefully his excellency will do the decent thing and yeah. give both Vivo a rematch. Mm. It was a masterclass performance in what was an amazing fight. And I don't want to disrespect Arthur Bestia because he's an incredible <laughs> champion. But he did not win that fight. Dimitri Bivol won that fight. Bivol wasn't just fighting. He was putting on a master class, showing us that crispy movement, slick defense, and pinpoint counters. A lot of folks, including Eddie Hearn, were straight up fuming at the result. Hearn didn't mince words either. He called the decision absolutely disgusting, saying Bivol got robbed, and a lot of fans agreed. Twitter blew up with people calling for a rematch even before Bivol had left the ring. We saw a guy that had never gone the distance before, the biggest monster in the sport, and we saw one of the purest boxers, one of the most skillful fighters I've ever seen. And I don't want to uh, disrespect Artur Beterbiev and his team because they're just incredible fighters. But I find it sickening that after a lifetime of hard work, Dimitri Bivo is not undisputed champion tonight. He won that fight. I struggled to find anybody on our road, a road behind, on the, the TV rows, who didn't score the fight to Dimitri Bivol. To find a judge, give that fight 116-112, and give Dimitri Bivol four rounds in that fight, this judge should never work in the sport again. But let's keep it 100. Despite the heartbreak, Bivol took the L like a true champion. Instead of complaining, the dude was all class, congratulating Beterbiev and his team. But you could see it in his eyes. He wasn't done. This wasn't over for him. You know, he's not about, um, he has heavy punch and uh, it's very dangerous. No, he's about how strong he is. And he's uh, not only one punch, when he's trying to punching combinations, combinations. Yeah. all punches in the combinations are heavy yeah. you know it's not uh, i could compare like with the uh, canelo yeah he put all his energy all his power on single punch yeah.
Now, let's talk about Beterbiev. Even though he walked away with the W and the belts, it didn't seem like he was fully satisfied with his performance. In the post-fight interview, he straight up said, I did not good today. He literally admitted that Bivol's skills gave him problems. This dude, who's known for just bulldozing opponents, was uncomfortable in there. That's something you don't hear from a lot of champs. But real ones know that even the most dominant fighters can struggle when they meet someone with Bivol's slickness. Just ask Canelo. Beterbiev also mentioned how he's usually not waiting for the bell, which tells us he didn't like how the fight played out. He wanted to stop Bivol, but that just wasn't happening. It's like he knew deep down that if the fight went to the scorecards, things might get dicey. Uh, yeah, he did a good job, like, you know, I don't know how how he uh, how he measured his work, I mean, good or not, but I am not bad boxer, I did not bad work, but I think Mark, uh, my coach, my team will uh, prove my, uh, I did what we prepared, I did some part of this work, not all the work, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> You know, if be honest, I always more critic of myself. And uh, even all my uh, last 20 fights, I'm because of her luck, I win them by QO. I'm always complain about my skills, performance. You know, that's why I'm not. I don't like what I did. I mean, I want to do more. Better, always. Bivol, who's been laying low since the fight, broke his silence. And yo, he's not playing around. In an emotional but focused statement, Bivol said he's demanding a rematch. He wants revenge, and he wants to prove to the world that he's the better fighter. His exact words? I don't want excuses. I want my revenge. Let's run it back. Have you heard anything that they're going to do an immediate rematch? Um, he told me also... Uh, in my opinion, uh, you won and I want to make a rematch for you. And uh, now it depends on uh, better be. This isn't just about the belts anymore. For Bivol, it's about legacy. Dude's been undefeated his whole career until that night in Saudi. And that L clearly doesn't sit right with him. And for real, the way the fight went down, who could blame him? Bivol feels like the judges got it wrong. And a lot of fans agree. But he knows the only way to settle this is to step back into the ring with Better Biev and take what he feels should have been his in the first place. I don't know about you guys, but calling this fight a robbery is a little far-fetched, don't you think? Yes, it was close. Both guys were battling till the very last second. Artur edged it fair and square. Teddy Atlas, the guy who coached Mike Tyson, also believes it was not a robbery. Fight. A lot of close rounds. I can see why they're conflicted. I'm not, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to judge anyone. Uh, I judge the fight though, mm. but I won't judge anyone because I get, it's subjective in certain ways. I can see that there's, there's two ways to look at it. There's two fighters. It was a close fight, a lot of close rounds. I had it 115, 113, better be it. Better be it. Yeah, because I thought he won the championship rounds. I thought it was a really, really tight, close fight. I thought that, as I often do, that a fight like this comes down to geography. Who gets the geography, to own the geography, the place in the ring, that suits their talents, their strengths better than the other guy. Mm. Who, who, who gets to own that space, you know, that real estate, if you will, more than the other guy? In the end, I thought very, very close and slight, but I thought better be a dick. This rematch, though, is going to be high stakes on a whole different level. It's not just about belts. It's about redemption, pride, and respect. Both of these guys have everything to lose. And that's what makes this potential rematch so crazy. Let's break it down. For Bivol, this is his shot at redemption. If he wins, not only does he get those belts, but he also clears up all that controversy and shows everyone that he's the real top dog in the light heavyweight division. A win here would be career 
career defining, solidifying him as one of the best boxers of this era. But if he loses again, yo, it's tough. Two L's to the same guy could really damage his legacy. And that's why the stakes are so high for him. For Beterbiev, even though he's got the belts, a lot of people are still questioning that decision. If he beats Bivol convincingly in a rematch, all the doubters can sit down. He'll leave no room for debate, cementing himself as the king of the division. But if he loses? Well, all the controversy comes flooding back, and people will be saying the first win was a fluke. The pressure is on for both men. Now, you gotta ask, what would change in the rematch? Because, let's be real, both of these guys are already at the top of their game. But if we dive into the X's and O's, here's where things could get spicy. Bivol's movement was on point in the first fight, but maybe he played it a little too safe at times. In the rematch, he might need to be more aggressive, push Viterbiev back, and take more risks. He's got the skills, but sometimes you gotta take it from the judge's hands, especially when you're fighting fighting away from home. He knows he can't let it go to the scorecards again. I, I felt like I could, I could be, I just had to throw more punches here. Uh, but I tried to land hard and I tried to ca catch him, you know, because I saw his movements uh, and I, I was trying to catch him with clean punches. But I had to throw more just punches. What? To be honest, uh, to be honest, I didn't feel that I was in groggy or something like this. Uh, I felt some pressure, but uh, it was control, un under my control, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I felt that he's pressuring and uh, I needed it. I needed it more from him, to be honest. For better Biev, he's got to find a way to make Bivol feel those legendary power shots more consistently. He couldn't really trap Bivol the way he wanted to, so expect him to focus more on cutting off the ring and going to the body to slow Bivol down. If better Biev can land big shots earlier, he might not have to worry about the judges at all. But hey, the way Bivol has been talking after the loss, it's pretty dangerous. He sounds like he's ready to go tomorrow. The guy wants his get back yeah he was uh, very similar what I was expected from him you know a lot of fighters who's fighting with him uh, with him with Canelo uh, their emotions was against them you know a lot of things depends on your emotions on our emotions which which we are feeling because emotions could not let you uh, realize all your potential, you know. And uh, the aura again around Better Beef is like his monster and this and that. Some people will be scared of it, but I was excited. I was trying to use right emotions about it. Now, the big question is, will this rematch actually happen? We all know how boxing can be with these negotiations. However, both fighters seem down. Beterbiev already said he's open to it, and now Bivol's calling for revenge. So, as long as the money's right, there's no reason why this rematch shouldn't go down. And when it does, bro, it's gonna be the fight of the year again, hands down. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.